I really don't like being mean to people, but this review of Elden Ring just pisses me off beyond belief. Let's get into it. What's up guys welcome back to yet another major ben video now this guy has way more subs than me so if any of them do see this i'm probably gonna get absolutely grilled for it but to be honest i don't care this kind of video just really annoys me when people do this kind of thing and it's just negativity for absolutely no reason around a game that clearly is very well loved and i understand that we're all allowed our own opinions but the reasons this guy gives for not liking the game because it's a dark souls like game just annoys me and then earlier in the actual video he says that he likes dark souls games so uh, i'm just kind of confused so i want to kind of react to this video and just have a talk about it while we go through it because to be honest I, I don't get what his point is here and it just seems that he criticizes this games for the for the own mechanics of why these games do so well so let's get into it attention I do not think that Elden Ring is a bad game. And I know that there's people that are going to see the title of this video and get very angry because we live in an era where everything affects us personally. If somebody doesn't like what we like, it affects us personally. We get very angry about it. I don't think necessarily people think that it affects them personally. I think it's more that so many people are enjoying this and the reasons you're about to give in this video, as we'll get to find out, are just utter dross, to be honest. Because we don't understand why this person doesn't doesn't love what we love and that's fine I, I enjoy passion and I know that there's a ton of souls fans and from software fans that are very very passionate about what from software does fully being aware of that you should know going into this game that is probably going to be a difficult game it's been talked about for such a long period of time since Elden Ring was announced and I'm not here to say that Elden Ring is a bad game because I, I don't think it is a bad game, but I have questions about this game and I, I kind of just want to go over my thoughts of my time thus far and try to draw some conclusions and maybe you die hard from software and you die hard souls fans can help me because I feel like there's a disconnect that I'm having with this and I feel like there's a disconnect that maybe other people out there are having with these games and these types of games that they're afraid to speak up about yeah I mean uh most people who are upset with the game usually find it too difficult that's the reason and I think a lot of people don't speak up about it but is because they physically can't do the game so they're actually embarrassed about the fact that they can't do it you know and the thing is everyone can do this game it's one of the things i'm going to talk about in my elden ring review is everybody is capable of beating this game it just takes work and i know i'm going to take way longer than the average person i'm not some sort of expert on the souls game this is one of my first ever full souls games that i plan on beating so i you know i am not afraid to say that the other souls games are great even though i can't do them but this is one i'm going to tackle and make sure i beat because everybody can do it i'm very far through this game already and i I thought at the start when I was kept getting beaten by certain bosses that I wasn't going to be able to finish it, but I am doing it and you do defeat them. You just have to put time in because like I said, there's a very passionate fan base for these games. When you look at critic reviews, which we'll get into, it obviously is being heralded as one of the best games of the year. People are saying it's already a game of the year winner. It's one of the best games of the decade. Just look, just look at Metacritic, you know, it's sitting at a 97, but- That's because even despite the difficulty of this game, the game is incredible. The open world atmosphere that this game gives is unlike any other game ever. It has ridiculously hard bosses in the open world, which you can avoid. You can kill at level one. There's actually a clip I'm gonna post in this video showing that you can kill a ridiculously tough uh, character at level one.
I mean, just that clip there is incredible, by the way, not my game footage, it's, it's from TikTok. But the fact that you can go into this game at level one, beat these bosses, uh, is is awesome the scalability of these bosses like the fact that they're just so difficult and you can be skilled enough to do them at level one there's not many games like that that allow you to be able to actually be a boss at level one but this game you can because it's all down to user skill and how you know how you learn the game and how you upgrade and if you can't kill that boss go away fight some random guys get more runes and come back to it later you have the option to do that like I said, I, I have questions. Now, I'm not doing a whole fancy video with this. This is just simply me playing some Elden Ring in the background and me voicing it over. But yeah, literally what I do for all my content right now, but at least my gameplay is actually native 4K, unlike whatever this crap we're seeing on screen from a YouTuber that has thousands, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Come on, man. Get that good quality gameplay up there. I've been playing this game for about six or seven hours now, and... I still just have questions because maybe something isn't clicking for me. Maybe maybe I'm missing something huge with this. Now, as far as my history with From Software games, I've played some of them. There's definitely been different levels of enjoyment with them. I played Dark Souls 1 quite a bit. Um, the other Dark Souls games I dabbled in and never got really super far. I played Sekiro on the PlayStation 4, and I played Demon Souls on the PlayStation 5. And I would say... Out of all of those games, Demon Souls was definitely my least favorite of all of those games, just because it was it was brutally it was brutally difficult. And that right there, just saying that Demon Souls was your was your least favorite one, and this game has been most compared to Demon Souls like combat. Maybe you should have realized before buying the game that that is the way this game is going to be playing. And I feel like. Elden Ring does a much better job with the difficulty. I'm going to talk about the positive things that I've experienced thus far in this game, and that's definitely one of the better things because of the fact that you have these essentially points of grace, which are like checkpoints all throughout the map. So when you die, you don't necessarily have to start from square one. Oh, guys, I want you to remember this when you say that he thinks the difficulty is one of the better points about this game, okay? You could simply go to, you go back to your point of grace or you could choose another point of grace, get around the map very easily. Now, as far as the map itself is concerned, I mean, it's, it's massive. This is probably one of the biggest open world games I've ever played. There's definitely some very breathtaking moments in terms of the visuals. Yeah, couldn't agree more, man. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible the way the game looks. Um, I'm playing on the PlayStation 5. I'm playing in performance mode. Obviously, fidelity mode is going to give you some better graphics, but I'm not really a graphics whore. You know, there's some pop-up in the game that I've experienced, but it, it's nothing that's detracted from the visual style of the game. There's some absolutely breathtaking set pieces. Some of these enemies just look absolutely incredible. For a guy who plays on Switch, I don't really care about graphics, that makes sense. Uh, but do you really care about frame rate since majority of the games on Switch don't even run at 30? And I, I think from a visual standpoint, it's, it's extremely solid. You know, I haven't experienced any sort of the jankiness in terms of frame rate that a lot of people seem to be having over on the PC version of the game. Obviously, you're not going to experience the jankiness of the pc version of the game because you just said you're playing on a playstation 5 why would you experience the pc glitches on the playstation 5 it's been a very smooth experience for me thus far they've added in a horse so that you could traverse through the land a lot faster and i i think that's a good thing because it helps you get across this massive land and this game when you're walking ridiculous distances fighting enemies that should be fought on horseback you're not using the horse and to be honest i don't even see it in your inventory at this point i question the fact that earlier you said you've only played six to seven hours and you're already this far through the game and you haven't bothered to go back, level up your character more. You've kind of just worked through the main storyline, not gone anywhere else and kind of leveled up your character. No wonder you're struggling with the game, guy. In the least amount of time because, you know, it's huge. It's, it's absolutely huge. There's so many nooks and crannies. There's so many little little hidden things to find within the game. They've also done things like added in a companion system where you can uh, basically, you know, call upon other companions to come help you in the heat of battle. There's some thing with like wolf dust where you can uh, acquire different types of enemies that will then help you in battle, like the wolves and stuff. You can call upon them. They'll help you out in the realm of battle. I, I do feel like the game is 
more accessible than a lot of the other Souls games are. So it's one of the easiest Souls games I've heard because of things like that. You can summon other people to help you. You can summon things like the wolves that kind of take the attention off the bosses um, and then you can kind of fight them. So yeah, it's one of the easiest Souls games for sure. I think it does have a lot of positive things going for it, but we have to get to, to, to my issues. Go guys, strap in with the game and sort of the disconnect I have with this game. I, the first thing I want to talk about is the open world aspect, because while it's absolutely massive, I don't feel like it's a game changing open world. I, I see a lot of people saying that about this game, you know, just because of the sheer size and scope of it. But if the world itself isn't all that interesting in terms of story and why this happened and how this came to be, does that really make it you know, the best open world. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like you literally come across some of the toughest bosses by just traversing the awesome landscape that's in this game. The, the, the game is a beautiful open world. As you just said, the horse that you get to traverse the open world is amazing. It makes things so much better to get around. Some of the actual best parts of the storyline that you're talking about come from some of the side quests that you will only find from traversing the open world. And to be honest, if you're six to seven hours through this game and you're already this far through the story that you're showing in this gameplay then you have not even bothered to look around the world you wouldn't have time if you're only six to seven hours in like uh, dude this this open world is one of the most interesting open worlds to ever be released not to mention with souls like combat it it combines for a phenomenal experience i think an open world like skyrim which is obviously a lot smaller than this is way more interesting because you, you get more story elements you know you come across these little encampments you come across these different people who all have little stories to tell these little towns these little villages just tell that this guy likes the uh the sony games where it's basically a film that you're just controlling the character the majority way through and you don't really get that an Elden Ring. It, it's it's big just to be big because the game doesn't really focus all that much on the story. It's one of those things where you have to kind of seek out the story if you if you want to enjoy it, you know. Which you clearly haven't been doing if you're six to seven hours through the campaign, uh, the main part of the game, and you're already this far through. You haven't bothered to seek out anybody to talk to. There is a ton of stories, a ton of character interaction. You just have to explore the world. This is the point and the style of the game that from software was going for you'll come across different npcs in certain locations usually they'll tell you a little something maybe they'll want to trade with you yeah their their mouths don't match the the speaking in the game which i think is bizarre for a game in 2022 but you know there are some things to sort of keep it fresh throughout but i i find it odd i i just find it odd that you know the the open world aspect is being heralded so highly when really the other souls games and games from from software were still open world there's many different paths that you can go down are you kidding me he's just said the game wasn't open world enough and now he's comparing it to one of the other souls games that by the way are fucking not open world in any way remotely close to this game how can you criticize this game's open world and then compare it to a previous souls game that isn't open world dude it sounds like you just don't like open world games it was just more confined a little bit whereas this has these big Big open segments of just huge areas and it's like the point of an open world game why did you buy it if you didn't like that kind of thing it's the same as breath of the wild that you love so much it's cool but there's not a whole lot going on within it in terms of story to get you sort of invested in the world itself now 100 convinced this guy would just love games like horizon spider-man um stuff like that where it's more narrative driven and not actual gameplay like you're more just watching a movie i mean i like those games too but this game the fact that you actually get to play the game throughout this thing is what makes it so great i think my, my biggest issue with the game and, and the biggest area of disconnect i'm having because i can i can overlook you know a story element if you watch one of my videos from a couple days ago i actually said that i was looking more forward to elden ring because of the fact that it seemed more action oriented than horizon forbidden west i've been enjoying horizon forbidden west but holy shit they just talk and talk and talk and talk whereas this game 
looked more action orientated where I didn't have to worry about some super deep narrative. Although I do feel like in retrospect, it would have potentially helped this game out a little more. There we go. A Sony game that he's discussing and he's just saying that there was too much talking in that game. So what's the problem? It seems like when the gameplay is actually there, you just don't like it. Maybe you shouldn't play this game and it's just something that you don't like because it's actually a game, not more of a film style thing. I mean, the, the gameplay is what makes this game so great and if if you're just saying you've literally just said yourself that you didn't like horizon forbidden west because there's too much talking in it and now you're saying you don't like this game because there's too much gameplay i get you want a balance but dude this game these games are notoriously known for their gameplay that's what they're there for you should know that if you've played the other games especially it was compared to demon souls which you've already said you didn't like and it was your least favorite but i was looking forward to the gameplay and I just feel like the gameplay is way too similar to other games I've played from From Software. Ah, oh, what were you expecting buying a From Software game? They've come out and openly said multiple times they're not going to change the way they make these games. They like making difficult games, and since Elden Ring, it's become more mainstream, so they're still never going to change that, especially now more people are adopting and enjoying this type of difficult game. It still has that, that sort of clunky interface for inventory management management the controls are still kind of weird the rolling feels just like the rolling did in the other games and yes you can level up in this game you can level up quite easily because of the aforementioned grace points where you can just basically you know harvest characters or harvest enemies in an area say you could level up easily is this guy playing a different game entirely like i'm only level 30 something and my upgrades cost me like nearly ten thousand per upgrade ten thousand runes like it's ridiculously hard to get that many runes without dying and having to go back and try and collect them without dying again so weren't you just complaining that the mechanics are clunky and the game is too hard and everything no and then save the game and level up and rinse and repeat but i still feel like this game at its core feels exactly like all the other souls games feels like all the other from software games maybe it feels a little bit better because the frame rate is better frame rate is better dude demon souls was 60 fps on ps5 well i i <sighs> This guy plays on Switch primarily. Why is he complaining about frame rate? But it, it, it still feels just way similar, you know, way kind of clunky. Man, I know that word is going to trigger a lot of people. Oh, he said it was a clunky game. What a pussy. He just dies a lot. And it's like, yeah, I, I do die a lot. Yeah, I kind of guessed, but you just said how easy it was to collect uh, an upgrade uh, with runes. So I don't know really what you're meaning by this, but you just said it's easy to do that, yet you die a lot. So I don't know. It just sounds like you're pretty salty about the fact that you just keep dying, to be honest. <laughs> in this game and but it, it doesn't bother me that i'm dying it, i'm gonna have to press x to doubt on that one to be honest bothers me that you know it's just very sporadic you know you come across a certain group of enemies and then you're just instantly dead you don't even have a chance archers have just infinite ai and wisdom but the characters in front of those archers never see you they because the archers are ranged archers the guys with the swords will come and attack you but they will have to walk to get there to attack you because they are close combat soldiers not like archers who will attack you and genuinely most games that have archers in usually see you first because they're ranged combat they, they, they they're just completely oblivious to you being there it seems like the ai is kind of all over the place i love the big boss battles i think they're super fun but once again you get these random difficulties spikes within the battle themselves that's the point of this style of game they're difficult the bosses have usually second parts to their fights because they kind of get more pissed off and angry that you're beating them and they have a second stage and you have to then relearn the mechanics of the boss to then you know be able to kill him that's part of the fun it's part of the way these games work you should know that buying a from software game since you've played all the others i haven't played as many from software games as this guy yeah i knew this was gonna be a difficult game with this style of mechanic where one thing just makes your whole battle go to shit and i know that there's people that love that about this franchise but with elden ring i guess maybe i was hoping it would be 
a little bit different like you could call this game dark souls 4 or dark souls 3.5 and nobody would bat an eye because it's the exact same style of game uh, do you hear yourself man this is not the same style of game yes it's the same combat and it's from the same people and it's difficult but this game is worlds apart from from any of the other games this is a proper open world game you can go where you like you can tackle everything straight away you can go and grind mobs to level up your character you can traverse all the ridiculously big lands that you've just talked about and you said that you don't like that the open world is that big you prefer the op the, the world size of the other games so obviously it's different if you like the old ones this is this is it's just a ridiculous comment just with some things added to it and like i get that i get that people love that souls formula but i was hoping for something a, a little bit more different the fuck are you were hoping for something easier that's what you were hoping for a little bit more and you know maybe that's maybe that's on me maybe that's on me for not following this game every you know inch of the way 100 it's on you it's been made very clear this game is not an easy game you could watch one review on another youtuber and you'd know this but from everything i saw with this game it definitely seemed a lot faster paced it seemed a lot more action oriented it seemed like you were going to be able to just you know go faster and be more fluid and that's literally what the game does and you said it yourself earlier you said it was just pure action not enough story now you're saying you wanted it to be more action and fast paced you literally talked about how you have a horse to get around which is fast paced you can fight on the horse by the way i don't think you know this because you're not doing it in the gameplay we're watching here you're just walking everywhere you can use the horse you can fight there's a different style of combat on the horse but you were just complaining about it not being action-packed enough yet before at the start you're saying it's too action heavy and there's not enough story Do, uh, are you okay man i i i just don't know and i i think the biggest the biggest issue with the game isn't necessarily with the game itself i think it comes from the the gaming press the gaming media that have talked about this game because let's be real these same websites that are giving this game a, a 10 out of 10 that give it the 97 on metacritic we've all seen them complain about games that are not hard as being too hard but this game that comes along that just kicks your ass you know chews you up and spits you out it gets a complete pass no nobody really mentions the difficulty because they say oh well it's just a, a part of the game it's a part of the franchise but yeah probably because from software make it clear that this game is difficult everyone seems to know that and even the reviewers will go in naturally thinking well this game is going to be hard but you can still do it like uh, just stop why is why is everyone thinking this game is impossible i get that they have this reputation for it being hard but everybody can do it i thought i couldn't do it i just had to occasionally go away level up my character to more and then come back to some boss fights and do it again i have friends from work who don't play video games anywhere near as much as i do and they're also working their way through this game and they are loving it and they've not played a souls game in their life before and they're enjoying it having a good time with it finding it difficult coming back and fighting the guy uh, for beating the boss and having actual a sense of reward because they've done something that was difficult I was under the impression that Elden Ring was going to be a new game. It almost seems like there's this hive mind mentality that kind of goes back to what I said at the start of the video, um, where people are afraid to sort of go against the grain and people are afraid to, you know, talk negatively about a game that everyone in the mass media seems to just love for whatever reason. And anyone's going against not liking the game. If you simply came out and said, I don't like the game because it's too difficult and that's it and I can't manage it, then fine. But the stuff that you're coming out with this in video, one minute you're saying the open world is great, it's beautiful. And then you're saying that's a bad mechanic and it should be like the other Souls games. But then you also say that this game is too much like the other Souls games and it's not different enough. So, I mean, these statements you're coming out with are so ridiculous it's impossible to take you seriously at this point i think that's just the most bizarre the most bizarre thing to me like i don't know if it's a fear of getting blacklisted or a fear of just you know sticking out amongst the crowd but i'm not afraid i'm not afraid like i i it, it's bizarre to me that people get so tribalistic over companies and games because every game has flaws every company has flaws and you're the one making the video criticizing people because of a game mechanic that's been notorious you know a game designer that's been notorious you know for making difficult games and then complaining about it so uh, is this not exactly what you're doing should we not be allowed to criticize you for coming up with ridiculous statements and but you're allowed to criticize these game makers for making a game that is 
notoriously known for the way it is. Like, they can do what they want. It's fine if you don't like it, but at least tell us why you don't like it without coming up with ridiculous statements contradicting yourself in the same sentences. It's just embarrassing. And you're going to see in a second that he does the exact same thing again in a minute. I wanted to love Elden Ring. Like, I fully went into this game expecting, you know, a Souls-like experience, but maybe a little bit faster, a little bit quicker, a little bit more interesting to me. Oh my god, man, you just said it was too Souls-like, and now you're saying you wanted a Souls-like experience. Dude, oh god, this is infuriating. Let's just listen to this full sentence a second, and you guys tell me what's wrong with it, and I'll tell you as well. Like, I fully went into this game expecting, you know, a Souls-like experience, but maybe a little bit faster, a little bit quicker, a little bit more interesting to me. And what I got was yet another Souls game. Just put those two bits together and hear what this sounds like. Like, I fully went into this game expecting, you know, a Souls-like experience, and what I got was yet another Souls game. Now, what's wrong with that sentence? He was going in expecting to get a Souls-like experience, and yet what he got was another Souls game. Uh, I do my job is being done for me here. I don't really know what more I can say. And I know people love it because of that, but... I don't know. I, w I was just hoping for more, and maybe this is on me. And like I said, I'm not saying that the game is bad or anything. I was just hoping, maybe expecting something different, because to me, it just feels like another Dark Souls game. It feels like another game in that franchise instead of something new. And I feel like this could have been a point to do something new, to do something different. I mean, and that's exactly what they did. They created a massive open world game with amazing quest storylines, especially some of the side quests that you clearly haven't experienced if you've only spent six to seven hours. To be honest, even talking about this game six to seven hours in is a complete waste of time. I'm like 30 or 40 hours in at this point, and I've spent a good amount of time in this world. And there is many storylines, especially in the side quest areas. You just have to go and find them. But again, he's saying that he wanted a Souls-like game and he got one and he doesn't like that. So I'm just lost. I get on Game Freak for recycling the same Pokemon shit over and over again. Isn't it time we sort of start to question from software and their recycling of the same exact style of game over and over just with the different name? I don't know. I'm just rambling here. Yeah, no shit, man. I can tell you're just rambling here because you have no clue what point you're saying. You've just compared this game to a Pokemon in the way they recycle stuff. This game is entirely different. And if you can't tell that they put hours, uh, years of time, I should say, developing this game and making it different from any other Souls game ever, then you really should not be reviewing games at all. But if you love the game, that's awesome. I'm, I'm very happy for you. I'm glad that you're enjoying the game. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. But I just wanted to talk about it myself because, I mean, I'm going back to Horizon, man. Like, I, I don't know. It's just this game just isn't clicking with me, and it's probably just a me thing. Yep. And if that's the case, let me know in the comments what I'm missing. Let me know in the comments what I'm not what's not clicking with me in this game and maybe that will help me and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel and you don't absolutely hate me for talking somewhat negatively about elden ring be sure to hit that subscribe button like and share the video and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one take care later yeah i mean i don't think anyone hates you i don't hate you at all I, I never would say i hate a person because they're not liking a game but i just find that some of the stuff you came up with this you know in this video for the reason you don't like the game just ridiculous i honestly suggest if uh if you would listen to what i would suggest i have left a comment as well on your video i would suggest that you go back and uh grind out some of the mob areas explore the first area of the map level up your character and i can guarantee that you will find the bosses a ton easier because of that like you just need to go back and you know look around also it will that will fix the story aspect of stuff where there is things that you have to do there is people you have to talk to there's people you have to deliver stuff to go and meet and and discuss things with i don't want to spoil too much because there's so much hidden in the corners of this game you guys wouldn't um, believe the stuff that you can come across you'll be on your horse riding around an area of a map and you'll think oh there can't be anything here but there literally is there'll be a cave and you'll think oh it'll just be a small cave with mobs and no there are actually people in there to go and talk to you just have to 
to go and look around. But anyway, I hope this guy does try it again. I have nothing against RGT85. I subscribe to him. I, I watch a lot of his Switch content. I've always watched his stuff. This just really pissed me off and disappointed me in his reviewing capabilities because I seriously think this is something he should go and check out and, and try again at because it's a game that should not be missed. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please do leave a like. Please do subscribe if you enjoy this content. And I'll see you in future videos. Bye-bye for now.